Hi everyone! I am finally getting around to making this video. Today I'm going to be showing you my whole collection of vintage and antique art supplies that I've collected over the years and I have been looking at them for weeks and weeks. I pulled everything out and I've sat it on a little desk and they've been sitting there staring at me accusingly saying film us and they've been cluttering up my studio and I really can't wait to put everything away so I can reclaim my space back. So let's get into it. I will show you everything that I have. All right, the first thing I'm going to show you are all of my pens that I have. And I don't have a huge amount of vintage ones or what ones that I would call vintage, but I've got a few interesting things. This one says Baronia on it. So this is actually, I don't know if this is a souvenir or if it's someone Baronia is a local suburb um, not too far away from where I am and it's possibly a handmade piece by someone in a wood turning shed <laughs> but it's a, a dip pen it's the nib unfortunately is not great you can see that it's a bit split there so I haven't done anything to try and fix that yet but I might try and see if I can squish it together a bit with some pliers and these two I got on a road trip a few years ago we went to a small country town and they had a little market in the street and someone was selling a whole bunch of ink bottles which I will show you a bit later and also these two dip pens and I took a fancy to them I really love this one this one's really great to write and draw with it says British pens limited accommodating holder England I don't know how old these are and they could be anyone's guess this one is not marked at all but both of them have nice nibs that are fully intact so they're totally usable and in this plastic box which obviously is very vintage <laughs> I've got just a few pens that I got last year at the Melbourne pen show there was a guy selling just a box of pens for a dollar and it, they were basically in as is condition I've cleaned up some of them they are of indeterminate age this one is a Parker and it's got a pretty interesting nib on it and I think yeah so it's got the Parker Pen Company Janesville Wisconsin USA and it says to fill press ribbed bar three times wipe front end pen point down with soft tissue use super chrome ink well I don't have any of that so I'll just use whatever ink but that's a pretty good mechanism and this is in good working order so I like that for a dollar it's not too bad and I'll just put that one back together I should, probably should have put that together before I put the lid on and I also have another pen which I think is the same but in green and this one's also in pretty good condition it's got a different nib I think yeah look that's like a food a nib that one's a food a nib and this one's a, a nice fine point so they've got a bit of a smell to them I have cleaned them out but sometimes things just don't seem to get clean very very well let's put that down oh, yeah okay the smell that's coming out of this pen it's like really old ink dusty musty sort of smell but the mechanism on that works although that feels a little bit brittle like it's going to crack with age hopefully it will last a little while and uh oh I think that one goes with that lid and that one goes with that one <laughs> oopsie <laughs> okay this one is that Schaefer pen that I bought in my last video about shopping in vintage art supply stores so I won't go through that one again but that's a nice pen plastic probably 80s I reckon most of these are around the 80s sort of era maybe even a bit later I don't know this one is really cute but unfortunately it's not very nice inside um, the nib feels like it's a bit bent I don't know that this pen is going to be very good at all it's um, it came I just grabbed it because it was cute but oh my goodness it does not want to come out at all 
Okay, you could see I actually had to remove the bladder off it. It was one of those old... Oh, goodness. I'm not too sure what the material is that they use them from, but it was totally brittle and cracked and disgusting, and I managed to get most of it off, but I think this pen might just be one that we look at because it's got a lot of damage and it's not really worth paying to get it all repaired, I don't think. But it's a cute little piece just to look at. I usually try to get things that are functional, but that one, it was a lucky dip, as I said, and I didn't really want to inspect everything too heavily when the man was standing there watching, so I just grabbed a bunch and bought them home. I bought this one because I like the colours on the and the stripy pattern. This one also feels a bit flimsy too. It is... Um, New Diamond Deluxe USA is what the nib says. There's no other markings on it that I can see. Does this one come apart? No, that one's not going to come apart. <laughs> Actually, I'm not too sure if this does something, if you're supposed to push it, but yeah. I don't really know what I'm going to do with this pen either. I just bought it because it looked pretty on the outside. Ah, but maybe not so functional on the inside, eh? <laughs> and these two are identical. They're very, very light. They're very flimsy feeling. They are Schaefer pens again. That one is a more popped version of this one. This one also says medium on it, which would be referring to the nib, and yes, that's definitely a medium point. And does it have anything inside? No, it does not. So this would require a cartridge of some kind. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with this one yet. And this one's the same, it's also a medium point. I don't think this one has a... <laughs> does this one even open? Yes, it does. Alright, quickly looking. I don't think either of them had... Oh no, this one does. Okay, so this Schaefer actually looks the same as that other one in here. So it's quite possible that I could interchange those. But at least one of the pens has a cartridge which I could fill. So maybe I'll swap over the lids and make one really good pen out of the nicest components and leave the other bits aside. Alright, those are my vintage pens. I haven't got a lot yet. You can obviously buy really expensive fountain pens that cost an absolute fortune and I'm, I love fountain pens. I prefer to buy new ones for the most part. I will show you my fountain pen collection eventually, all of my new ones, <laughs> but I haven't really gotten, you know, so it's, fountain pens, I love them, but I'm not a massive collector of them, so these are the ones I have for now. I like the little dip pens as well, they're quite useful and I do use these, so that's pretty good. Okay, moving on. Okay, this is my bottle collection. Not all of them are art bottles, but quite a lot of them here are ink bottles. All these little guys I found, they were little vintage ink bottles, and that one in the back right hand corner was a glue bottle. So I imagine most of these would be around the 40s and 50s. That blue bottle there I think is about 1900. That's probably my oldest known bottle there. But I didn't really want to have to pull all of these down because they're awkward. So that's them and I will go back to the table. Okay, I've just grabbed a few bottles off my um, glass bottle stand there. So these are all little ink bottles that would have been used in schools. Newton's ink, this one says. Schools, offices, writing desks, I guess. This is a great old green one. Another style of ink bottle. And this is the Clag bottle, which is the property of Angus and Co, is what that says. So this would have had glue in it and a brush going in the top to pick out that white, snotty, disgusting glue that kids use. At least I assume that's what it is. <laughs> it could be something else completely. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. I'll put those to one side and have some more 
bottles here. Okay, you remember these from the video? So these are Schaefer script. Scri I can never say that. Schaefer script. And that comes with its very messy looking wooden inkwell. Let's put that there so you can see it. This is that funny one I got from the market. And then I got this one which came with just a, a modern dip pen and that's got a thing. They remind me of those old-fashioned privies or toilets that they used to have in the like middle ages. <laughs> they just It just looks like this one looks like a toilet doesn't it? <laughs> it amuses me anyway. And I don't know if you remember seeing in my video I mentioned one that I saw a a glass inkwell set that was missing the lids. Well here's the one that I have with the lids. This is probably one of my favorites. I'll just turn it like that and you would put your ink in there or maybe even a tiny little bottle and even this little middle bit should come out but that is welded in there and I'm not going to pull it in case I pull it off and destroy it so I'll leave that as it is unless it just is like that and you're supposed to pick it up by like a handle who would know but I really like this one I think this one's really pretty and I've got a few other little ink bottles so we have um, we have this one which is the Joplin's black rubber stamp ink that I showed you in the last video then I also have a penguin Indian ink by Wiltshire's or Wiltshire and I could not find any information on this unfortunately which is annoying but if anyone knows anything obviously fill it in the comments below please and then we had this cochineal bottle which is more of a food coloring a food dye and then I've got this really old one which I found ages ago which says extract of cochineal and unfortunately it is missing half of the label and it had really dried up leavings of cochineal inside and so I actually rinsed out the bottle to see what I could get so I dissolved everything that was in there because that bottle looked a bit dodgy with the cork I have this old bottle which I have put the now diluted cochineal in and I just thought I'd quickly show you the colour because the colour is rather spectacular, it really is beautiful and it's kind of a bummer that we don't get to use cochineal in our art anymore but it really is just not the greatest thing for staying nice and bright and vibrant. I probably should have wet the paper first. Oopsies! Well I'll just grab a brush because I've, I've gone and cleared away all of my water haven't I? Oh no wait my good old Ned Kelly mug still here with water in it oh goody okay let us I'll just dampen the brush a bit just so I can wet out the cochineal there we go there we are just add some more water and I'm just going to add some more of the liquid Naughty naughty putting the brush in like that, but I'm only doing it for a moment, so there we go. Let's just drip some on. Isn't that pretty? What a lovely colour. That real carmine colour. Yeah. I would totally use this in a painting. I really would. But the reason that we don't, and I'll just move out my paintbrush and water. The reason we don't is because cochineal is a very fugitive colour which means that when the sun hits it it's going to disappear. This one I've had in a fairly dark area but it's fading a little bit but when you put it in the sunlight and I've had one sitting in the sunlight for well about a month yeah that's been in the in the sun for a month the colour has changed and it's starting to fade and we've had a really wet summer so it hasn't been as sunny as it normally gets but you can see the difference just in a month 
So this is why you don't want to use cochineal in your artworks if you're going to hang them on the wall. It might be okay in a sketchbook or somewhere that stays dark, but even this one is fading, which has been in a dark space for quite a long time. I've had this one going for, I didn't write the date down, probably about a year or so I think this one's been in there. But just when it's wet, just look how pretty it is. <laughs> so that's why I liked cochineal. I think it's a fascinating pigment, but unfortunately it's just no good for art anymore. I completely forgot about my brass inkwell. So I also had that one with my little inkwell collection. Oh. <laughs> and remember the lid is broken, so that's really annoying. I think that's going to be an ornament rather than an actual functioning piece. Next up, I got these last year in a small country town in Victoria. And these are Marshall's Spot All Liquid Photo and Negative Spotting Dyes. Now, the, obviously these are for photo touch-ups, the old-fashioned way, but you can use them for colorists, artists, designers, illustrators, map makers, and art students. So it's basically like an ink, an ink, which I have not actually used these yet, but I've had them sitting here, and it would help if I actually had them up the correct way. It's such a cool box, and the whole thing was full. Although a couple of them, and I think it's the neutral black, is completely empty which is kind of a bummer because that would be the one I'd probably want to use but there's also blue black olive tone sepia selenium and brown tone so some of these actually have inks in them and and I've just found a little piece of watercolor paper here so why don't I just try a couple and see what they actually look like I've never actually opened these I brought them home I put them on a shelf and I promptly forgot about them. <laughs> they smell old. Let's just have a little look. So these would be, I'm guessing, like a dye. They're very transparent and they say they're permanent. So where's my trusty brush here? So I have no idea if these would be light fast or not. But they're quite nice, they're pretty, very transparent. This one's only got a little bit. Okay, this is a much darker redder brown. This is selenium brown. It's a pretty colour. This one, the bottle's gotten very squishy. That that um, squishy bit on the top, I don't think is actually working anymore. Yeah, this one's totally gone. So I'm just not even going to attempt to open this one because this one's going to require some fiddling and I'll probably need to get, to get pliers to sort of um, shift this inner bit off. So I'm just going to leave that one because I don't want to ruin it. <laughs> this one is olive tone. Let's have a look. Okay, the, yeah, this one. Oh no, this one's coming. This um, pump thing is not working either and it feels really brittle. It's, ew, that's like, that's really gross. This one's a bit gross. I cannot get it off. Oh no, here we go. It's a tiny bit. Maybe I'll just put the brush in it. Okay, I'm just going to put the brush in and pull a little bit out. That's a pretty awesome brown. But it, you can see there's little bits and pieces in it, so it's kind of dried up a bit. And it's only in the blue-black. I've got a bit in the blue-black. Yeah. Okay, let's have a quick look at blue-black. And we'll paint that out. I'm thinking I might even have to buy a new one of the, of the neutral black, just because it would be nice to try it to try it out but they're hard to get I think they're American and they're quite expensive so I'm not sure if I will or not but you can get it I think I saw them at B&H on their website so if you're into photography and things you can definitely still get these and that's the blue black which looks like a Payne's grey so overall this is a pretty cool set I'm not sure that I'll use it very much but I just wanted to have it 
It's for pen, brush, and airbrush. Correcting and toning, retouching, spotting, liquid photo, and negative spotting dyes. I was a photographer for many, many years, and I still do photography, so photography stuff interests me personally, but I reckon you could paint with these if you really wanted to, but they are a bit manky and old and gross, so I might just keep them for looking at rather than necessarily using them. Okay. Oh. Kind of just put all that together and we'll move that out the way. How cool is this? I saw this one day, this was at the Waverley Antique Market. It's a crocodile or alligator head stapler. <laughs> Isn't that the coolest thing? I saw it in the cabinet and I just said, I'm, I'm getting it. I don't even care what it costs. That's just awesome. And it works. It takes mini staples, as you can see here. Okay, would you believe I tried stapling something and I've managed to get it jammed? How annoying is that? Anyway, it's a crocodile head stapler. It is made by Royal Selangor. And there's the stamp, it's not very good, it's worn off a bit. So I'd say this has been quite well used. I'd say this was made in the 90s, so it's not that old, but I just thought it was super cute and it sits on my desk and it's a really great ornamental piece. Next I've got a couple of little, I think, I originally thought they were ink well things, but what I think they are are just desk organizers. I've seen them described as desk organizers and I particularly like the Latuzzi, but they're really nice. They're, I love glass things, anything made of glass and they're very solid. Most of them seem to be dated around the 1940s. So that's what I'm going to say. They're 1940s <laughs> around that sort of time. And I have a really big one as well, which is kind of awkward, but I found it in a store and it was really cheap. It was only about $10 or something, so it was a no-brainer that I was going to bring it home. Now, this is a real piece of glass. Isn't that awesome? So, you can store pens and pencils. At the moment, I don't seem to have a single pen, so we'll just put pencils in it. Okay, I've got some pencils lying around. So, you would have your pencils in there. You might want to put, oh, what else would they have? Well, <laughs> a very modern eraser. And I expect that this would have held an ink bottle. So why don't I just put the script bottle in there? And yeah, it's a pretty cool set. You know what else you could put in there if you had an ink bottle? <laughs> uh, some dip pens. So why don't I put some dip pens there? So the dip pens sit there. You've got your ink. You could put maybe a little sponge or something in there just to you know wipe off your ink pen so it's quite a useful piece it's really heavy and sometimes i have to put it away because it is quite bulky but i do try to use this when i can because i really like it so i will need to set up my desk again i've got a couple of different desks in my studio and i've got a writing desk and i would like to put this on it as a a piece to use and to look at and admire because it's gorgeous. 1930s, 1940s, roughly around then. I also have this one. Now this is just really for one inkwell and maybe one pen. So I don't think the script would fit in there. Yeah, that one's massive, so that's not going to fit in there. But for example, you might have like your little Penguin India ink that would go in there and I guess you'd have your dip pen there so I really like this one too I think this one's 1930s you could even rest a pen like that so they're quite handy they have a lot of grooves in them so you can sit all sorts of things in them I think they're really nice and they're really useful too and that's heavy that's solid glass really solid so they don't make things like they used to hey okay this next thing is not even an art supply but I just happened to see this at the Ballarat Mill Markets. It is, I think, to put in your bar, like a cocktail stick um, holder, but it also doubles as a pencil holder. So I consider this an art supply. I could not tell you when this thing was made or what it is even, but it's an umbrella. It's got, let me just um, take them out for a second. It does have that. It says it's made in Italy, would you believe? And now it's a, a lovely 
pencil, pen and paintbrush holder. Isn't it cute though? <laughs> it's so garish and I just thought this would be so much fun in my studio. I just love to have unusual things. This one I found in Ballarat in their mill markets there and this is the sketchbook of Australian birds by R. Hamilton May and I just I randomly came across it. I just saw it in a pile of other things and it's actually quite nice. It's got some really great illustrations of Australian birds and also a little bit of how to draw them which I think is quite interesting like their proportions and a little bit of the anatomy of them. So I thought this was really great. So yeah, I, that's a great picture. That one's a really great illustration. I got this for the drawings. They're really fa fantastic. I did a little bit of research and I found it, I think, listed on Abe Books as well. And because I couldn't find a publication date in here, but it says 1969 that this book was published. So yeah, that's a cute little book. And there's a couple of colour images in there. King parrots and crimson rosellas, we get so many of these around our house and where we live, so they're a couple of my favourite parrots. And a peregrine falcon at the end. Okay, we saw the silver box which I'm intending to possibly use as a watercolour palette, so I haven't done anything with that yet. That's in the to-do pile, <laughs> so I'll move that out the way. Okay, my shopping tour. I did pick up a Winsor & Newton paint box and I decided not to bring it home because it was really dirty, but that's because I also already have one and I picked this up at Hunted a few years ago. I saw it advertised on the Instagram page and I went down there and they still had it so I had to bring it home. I think I paid about $20, $24 for it and it's a, a very old metal art tin painting box I think and if we open it up look at that it's pretty awesome it's kind of a work and work of art on its own but this one's actually a Reeves and Sons one so it's not Winsor and Newton it's Reeves and I did a little bit of looking up from what I can gather they've been around from 1891 to 1976 so this would have been made prior to 1976 I suppose I don't know when exactly it would have been made. I mean, your guess is as good as mine on this one. It's still got a bit of a smell. I've actually washed it because it was just filthy and I couldn't stand to touch it, so I did give it a good wash out. And it came with some very vintage looking brushes here. Look at this thing. How cool is that? I also washed the brushes as well. I mean, they've still got all of their patina and things on them, but I just couldn't stand how dirty they were and some of the brushes this one actually has come back and it's really nice so this would be a genuine hair brush um, this one I'm not seeing any markings a lot of the markings have worn off the brushes but it feels it's quite it's quite a coarse hair so I'm not too sure what that would be exactly but in here there's also this one's from Germany This one is a Reeves and Sons, so this might have even come with this box. This may have been an original brush with this box. You never know. That one says John Zev something or other. John something and co. So this would have been another company. But they, they're actually quite nice brushes. They're still in relatively good condition, which is pleasantly surprising. Some of them are better quality than others. This one's made in China. Pure bristles, this feels like a hog bristle brush. Maybe this one's a bit newer. Um, this one... Oh, Finest Sable Hair in a low series. I'm not too sure what that says, but it says Finest Sable Hair. So that's a nice one. And that's lovely and soft. And then there's this couple of tiny ones in here. This one's a Windsor & Newton, made in England. This one is well and truly stuck in here, it feels like. 
This one is a Turner made in China. So this is another Chinese one. And that's another Windsor & Newton. I'm getting down here. I've got this. This all came with it. This was only 20 bucks and it's, it's quite good. This is, is another sable hairbrush. I mean, sable brushes are blooming expensive, as anyone who's used them knows. So to find a few that came in this box was quite exciting. This is one of my best ever finds, I think. That one, I cannot read. Aurora something? It feels like a hairbrush, but it's quite a bit more damaged. So I'm not too sure. And there's a teeny tiny little one, which is Windsor Newton as well. So yeah. This was one of my favorite sets. I'm always on the lookout for nice art boxes. It's really hard to find any that aren't just almost completely destroyed because obviously whoever had them actually used them. I will come back with the very last piece I have which is probably my favorite thing out of everything and that will be it. Okay, and my favorite piece that I have in my collection is this Rowney's watercolor box. I really love this. I have cleaned it up a bit. It, Although it was in pretty good condition when I got it, um, it was just a bit dirty. You can hear the half bands rattling, so let's just open it. I mean, how lovely is this? It's such a well-built piece. And inside, I have actually done a little bit of restoration on this. So when it came, it, w it did have the paint still in, but I tested them out and they were just, I mean, they were pretty ancient and they were nasty. And I've actually put them in a plastic bag in a safe place and I cannot find them anywhere. I was going to show you them but I can't find them so I guess I'm just going to have to go without. But these are the pans that come in. They're pretty, they're very very thick. They are plastic. They may be Bakelite but I think they're plastic. And it came with a little mixing tray which was disgusting and scratched and filthy and I've actually gotten a, a white enamel paint and gone over the top of it. It says made in England on the bottom and that's metal. And the cutest little water pot ever. I mean how cute is that? <laughs> that's the original water pot. I haven't done anything with that. But it also came with a set of brushes in here and they're really nice quality ones and they're still in very good condition. Let me just pull, pull them all out. I'm not sure if all of these would have come with the set or if some of them were additions that the um, person who owned this had that they put in. Looking at some of them, I think perhaps these ones, which are, they say Rownies on them, I think the ones that are black most likely came with this set. And let's have a look. Yeah, look, they're all different sizes. So I would say that those three came with the set. And then there's also this one here and this one here that are also black. This looks like it would be a matching set, doesn't it? Okay, this one's not as roundies, so it would have been these four that came in this set. They feel like they're real. That one's, can you see someone's cut that? That's very annoying. <laughs> um, they're made in England. They don't say what they are. Maybe a sable or a squirrel. But then it's also... This one, which is a Premier Red Sable in Germany, this is a beautiful brush. It feels so soft, and that's going to have to be one that I use. There's also this lovely one, which is a Rownies, and that's a squirrel hair, and that's incredibly soft as well. So these will pick up so much water and paint. This is another Rownies, a Cotman. So this would have been added later, and that looks like it's a, a Taclon. And Rowney Ring Cat, which feels like an animal hair one too. So this is my absolute favorite set. I think I really actually want to put this one back into use. So I've emptied these pans out and I'd like to get some paints to put in them. I'm considering getting the M. Graham paints because I've been looking at those for a long time. And I might buy a set of those eventually to put in here. So that's something that's down the track when... I feel like I can justify buying them. <laughs> but yeah, that is my favorite piece in the whole collection so far. I'm always on the lookout for paint boxes, especially watercolor paint boxes. So if anyone knows where there's some good ones that I can find, or if you have one that you might want to sell, 
or just let me know of your favorite vintage shop that would be great too. drop all your comments down below and please like and subscribe to see more videos thank you so much for watching i really hope you've enjoyed my little collection it is still growing i haven't been collecting for that long you know it's off and on thank you again and i will swatch you all later bye